What's up guys, Chad here. How's it going? Welcome to another exciting edition of uh, Chat with Chad. Tonight we're gonna be learning about keyframes and After Effects. No, I'm kidding. I, I said that because for a second there I felt like Andrew Kramer from Video Copilot. Anybody know that one? Uh, Video Copilot. If you wanna learn After Effects, uh, start, start at uh, Video Copilot. Great site. Anyway, so Chat with Chad. If you uh, join me for the first two, which was top 20 N64 games and top 30 GameCube games. You might be expecting another list tonight. Um, I'm gonna veer away from that a little bit because I didn't really intend for Chat to Chad to be a list uh, type of video every single time. Uh, it was originally just supposed to be sit down, talk about life, talk about games, movies, whatever's going on. I thought tonight uh, we'd uh, maybe do a little bit of talking about how games affected my life. And I'd love to hear some stories from you guys too in the comments below or on Facebook. Uh, you can even write on my own Facebook. I'll have the links in the description below. Now for me, I've been gaming a very long time. As you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty old school, right? I got the beard. I got, this is me with the cane. That's not a very good cane. That looks dirty. What am I, what, what, what am I doing? But uh, yeah, I'm pretty old school. So some of my early memories are uh, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, games like that, uh, old Atari 2600s, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, that sort of thing. Anybody remember in television? I never had that, but one of my friends did, and so my early memories are they had this in television, and it had these buttons, numbers, like a remote control, very odd. Well, one of my earliest gaming memories was on Atari 2600, um, my sister and my dad and I, we, we got this game called Warlords. My mom wasn't into Atari as much. And my friend's mom called it Guitari. So she wasn't into it either. But anyway, we had this game called Warlords. And it used that paddle. Remember the paddle thing? You would do this. It was kind of like Breakout, where the ball would bounce, but you'd have to, each guy had a corner and you were trying to break their little base or something. It was like Warlords, but super basic. But that, that was a lot of fun. It was kind of the first like multiplayer player game that I can remember. You were on the same screen, kind of like Tank on Atari 26, no, Combat! Combat, it was called, and you'd shoot the tanks at each other. Oh, that was awesome. But even going back to the early days, gaming would kind of unite, you know, people, your friends and I, you know, your friends and I. Uh, my friends and I would have some fun playing, and uh, I was over at your friend's house too. We would used to play all the time. But uniting people to, to play games and have fun, obviously these days with online multiplayer, it's gone to a whole new level. But uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. I'm starting from when I was younger here. Younger before there was like gaming news. Uh, and if there was gaming news, it was some, some dorky guy who was actually a gamer delivering the news. You didn't have companies hiring hot chicks to read news and wear a geeky t-shirt. Look at this, I'm wearing a Zelda t-shirt. Now there's a whole industry based around games. There's all these Let's Plays. As soon as a trailer comes out, there's like millions of videos of everyone critiquing the trailer and giving their impressions. And uh, it's really come a long way. And I think that's great. Um, Cause back in the old days, it was, you were kind of an outcast if you played games. Uh, it, just, it wasn't cool back then because you weren't, you weren't playing Call of Duty. You weren't, you weren't shooting realistic military guns. There was nothing cool about it. You weren't shooting, you weren't flying realistic planes or driving realistic cars. You were a bear a cute little bear running around in the snow level with little uh, happy music playing. So back then you were kind of a dork and that's kind of what I grew up as. I was very shy, I was pretty dorky. Um, well, everyone in school was worried about, hey, let's go smoke behind the building. Let's have a cigarette because you're not supposed to. Me and my friends were worried about renting the uh, Super Nintendo or Genesis on the weekend uh, from the local game store. You'd rent the whole console. Did you guys remember that? I don't even know if they do that these days. You'd rent the whole console, bring it home, plug it into your TV, play. One time my friends dropped uh, the Super Nintendo in the snow in Wisconsin on the cement in the snow. They dropped it and uh, we plugged it in, it still worked. That the thing was tough. You probably couldn't drop an Xbox 360 without it shattering into a million pieces. Now, if you dropped a, a PS4 or an Xbox One, you might crack the concrete. Those things are huge. But anyway, back then those consoles were tough. The games were tough. Actually, that's one thing I wanted to mention. The games were super tough in the old days. 
And I gotta say, you know, you'd rent the game, just say Mega Man 1 or uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Ghosts, Super Ghouls and Ghosts? The Super Ghosts and Goblins. Super tough game. In fact, my friend Eric, I think, is the only guy I know that beat it. Maybe some of the other guys did too, but I, I certainly didn't beat it. It was a hard game. But you would rent these games back then. They'd be tough games. You'd be like, I have to beat this before I gotta return the whole console. Games were shorter in general. I gotta beat this before midnight. I can't go to bed without having beaten this game. And it really taught, taught us, I think, some determination. I really learned if, if you're determined to get through, you will, you'll eventually beat that final boss. If you take a little break, if you take a breath, you know, you'd be playing, you'd get more and more agitated. You'd want to crack that controller, but you'd be playing and you'd get more and more agitated and you'd do worse. You guys know what I'm talking about. I think games like that uh, still exist. You'd just get worse. You'd be like, now I'm rushing. Now I'm trying to, I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just sit a second, collect myself, settle down and do this right. And with that determination and just kind of collecting yourself to do it, a lot of times you would all of a sudden pass that boss or whatever part you're stuck on. And I feel like I, I carried that with me in life. You know, doing, doing screen team, doing these videos a lot of times, music videos, especially those sorts of things. It's not easy, you know? And you know, you got no budget, you're trying to do all this stuff, you're thinking big and you're like, what the heck did we get ourselves into? And then you gotta stop and think, collect your thoughts and go, we're gonna do this before we have to return the console. And uh, a lot of times I think back to those old video games and I think if it wasn't for them, I wonder if I'd be as determined. Hard to say. But we did, you know, we did have to deal with kind of being outcasts a little bit. Uh, like I said, back then gaming wasn't cool. I was, I was a pretty, um, I was a pretty awkward kid. And I don't use the word awkward lightly. People toss that around a lot these days to try and get the audience, especially on YouTube. I'm awkward to get the audience to relate to you. No, I was, I was awkward. We did Star Wars trivia, video games in the 80s, and I, I would cut my own hair. I'd go to school looking like a complete idiot because I cut my own hair. I was too shy to go to the uh, haircut lady, and I felt stupid. And, uh, you know, the true definition of awkward. I, I'd say in the last few years I lost that a bit. Maybe it's because gaming and the sorts of things that I've always been into have become more mainstream. So you can kind of relax in social situations and if you're wearing a Zelda shirt, all of a sudden, you're not the big dork. You're kind of the, hey, look at Zelda, huh? Yeah, oh yeah, Zelda. Always loved it. And I think a lot of my friends and I would, were pretty close knit. I think because we were kind of that group and uh, we would relate to some of the others, you know, maybe some of the science dorks, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. And uh, so, you know, we just weren't really the popular crowd, I wouldn't say. So I kind of grew up a bit shy really feel like when I had my friends, we had that extra close bond. And I think a lot of it had to do with gaming. As we got older, uh, in our 20s, and you're talking about work and that sort of thing, gaming was always the thing. Uh, every Sunday night, I probably talked about it in the last two videos a lot, but uh, Sunday nights was kind of game night. The guys would come over and we'd play Mario Kart, all that stuff. Uh, and even as we got older, the, gaming's, the gaming was kind of, no matter what was going on in life, at least you had the gaming that everybody could sit down and play, just laugh, have some fun, not talk any serious talk. And uh, so that was great. But I gotta say, you know, sometimes people don't, don't get it or they didn't get it. What do you guys think these days? Some of the younger uh, audience members, if you're watching, do you run into that? Or is gaming just totally mainstream? Is gaming the thing in elementary school these days? I don't know. Uh, back then for us, it wasn't. And some people didn't get it, but I always thought, well, you know, people will sit home all night, watch TV, or go surfing all day, uh, knitting sweaters, whatever you're into. I didn't find gaming to be much different. But because it was, gaming's pretty addictive, I gotta say, sometimes it would get in the way of life, you know? And I, I think back a lot of times, and uh, I was very into it, but, you know, sometimes I'll feel guilty. Yeah, you'd, you'd you know, call into school, <laughs> skip school, or call into work on, you know, Grand Theft Auto's coming out today, or uh, World of Warcraft, I was, you know, the new raid dungeon is out today, I'm calling into work. And <laughs> that kind of thing, I think back and I think, you know, I probably could have done better. Probably could have done a, done a better job at work. Probably could have uh, studied harder. 
but maybe everybody has their things. I don't know, that's, gaming was mine. You know, the only real problems were sometimes if I was so into a game that I'd miss like an event that was important to a friend or something. And I have a couple friends out there who, you know, they had some things in life. They were like, why don't you come? And I'm like, ah, yeah. And I'd, I'd sit home and play games. I mean, I feel kind of jerky about that. So I certainly wouldn't do that now. And I guess that's, you know, one thing you got to keep in mind is just to keep the games in check. The games are always going to be there. Make sure that you spend a lot of time with everyone in your life too, because they might not always be there. The games will always be there. So keep that in mind as you go. <laughs> also, you might even, you might even uh, forget to do a chat with Chad a certain week last week because you were too busy playing Pokemon X and Y with your fiance. That's what happened. If you, some of you guys were wondering, what happened to chat with Chad? One guy unsubbed. He said, no chat with Chad this week. You earned my unsub. Angie and I got Pokemon X and Y. We were just very into it, so. It's a great game. If you guys, uh, if you're ever into, if you're ever into Pokemon, or if you ever played it or ha ever have any interest in it, this is the one to get, X and Y kicks butt. So we talked a bit about the early days of gaming. This was all before the internet, when I was very, you know, outcast at school, that sort of thing. But once the internet came along and really started rolling, there were forums. Uh, I'd go to the IGN forums. IGN's still about the biggest site for gaming that there is. But I'm talking back in the GameCube, day, GameCube, maybe late N64 days. This was before they even had uh, avatars. Remember when they introduced avatars, you could put a, oh my gosh, you could put a picture next to your name. That's the coolest thing ever. And it just didn't exist before then, but I've, I got to know a very uh, small group of friends, well, probably 30 people who would post on there on a regular basis. And we all got to know each other's uh, fake names. And I, a lot of them, I didn't even know their real name. But we talked like family every night. It was like we threw parties and we had fake, uh, yeah, fake little parties and all kinds of stuff. Well, eventually IGN created a World of Warcraft guild. Um, I bought the game. I thought, oh, this looks neat. I like the style. I had no clue what I was getting into. And especially the social aspect of it. While I was leveling up, if anyone's played World of Warcraft or any, any MMO, I was Leveling up, it was going slow going. I was just kind of playing solo. There was a guild and guild chat. I didn't even really know how to work the chat. I was just trying to fight things. And uh, I was out in Red Ridge Mountains, if anybody knows what that is, about level 20 and I ran into this guy and we just started talking, but I didn't even realize really that he was in my guild. So I'm like, oh, this guy's cool. We were, we were talking and uh, it was funny and eventually got into talking on guild chat and all that. Well, that was 2004 and now it's nine years later I still talk to these guys, that same guy especially. Uh, his name is Mike, uh, Imperium in game. What's up, man? But you know, it's, it's great to, to meet people in a game like that and become good friends. You know, we've been talking about shows and all that stuff for years. And it's, it's just really cool. And that's what I really love about games, uh, especially now, the online aspect. You can connect with a lot of people, feel like you have a little community and friends. Back in the old days, we'd have these 40 man raids. So you'd have to gather up 40 guys to go beat these bosses in the dungeons. And we take a month to beat this dungeon. And, but when we finally beat it, Molten Core, we beat that dungeon and uh, over the voice chat, it was, you would have thought we won the World Series. It was like, yeah, guys screaming and it just felt awesome. So it was a real sense of accomplishment for 40 people to all get together almost nightly and, and conquer these bosses. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Now imagine, you know, I guess that's what movie making is like. A huge crew of people who actually make something that lasts forever. And uh, so, eh, you know, maybe uh, maybe beating the internet, maybe beating uh, fake computer pixel bosses isn't the greatest thing in the world, but it, it feels pretty awesome when you do it with a lot of friends. So I thought that was pretty cool. But finally, the one thing that I feel like a lot of people look for in life is the one, their love, whatever. And uh, you know, back in the days, like I said, I was a pretty awkward kid, quiet, shy, dated a couple girls here and there, didn't go that great and I wasn't that interested because I, I just felt like, you just say you're really into a sport, you're just the biggest football freak in the world. If you just say you got a girlfriend who just doesn't get it, doesn't like it, you know, it's not as fun. And I guess I felt like that with a lot of things, gaming, 
certain enter things in entertainment, movies, and that sort of thing. So I searched far and wide, all across the country on the internet, for the right girl. And I finally met Angie online. We met on a website called Hot or Not, believe it or not. And we had a lot of bolded keywords that meant they matched each other and uh, different bands. And we had video games was one, Star Wars, whatever. So we really connected. And I guess that's what I was waiting for the whole time was someone who you could connect with and, and have certain things in common with. And like I mentioned earlier, this week, um, We've been playing a lot of Pokemon X and Y. It's been a blast sitting around the house. Angie's got more Pokemon than me. She got Jigglypuff today in the Wonder Trade. I'm like, oh man, I don't have Jigglypuff. That She's really kicking butt in it. But it's just been a blast. And I think, well, man, you know, if I just had a girlfriend who was into her own stuff and I was into my own stuff, I feel like a lot of couples are like that. They just go, oh, I'm gonna be in the garage all night. And not really get to connect over those sorts of things. So I th but it wasn't easy. I mean, I'd, uh, for years and years I waited. I, uh, when I met Angie, she lived in California. I was in Wisconsin and we got together. So always always keep a lookout. Don't, don't think it's impossible if you're looking for a girl who shares your love for games and, or anything in life, um, especially these days with the internet. There's, there's always a way. So that's it for tonight, guys. I really just wanted to talk a bit about growing up as a gamer and some memories and being a gamer these days and and uh, continuing to be a gamer and gaming and doing games and hope you like talking about games and playing games. If you like this video, as always, hit the like button. It really helps us out. And uh, subscribe to be notified of our latest videos. Hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on Chat with Chad. Bye.